Yo, what it do guys and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, uh, this is going to be part of the Warframe Academy series that I'm bringing on towards my YouTube channel and we're going to be looking at status damage within Warframe. All of the elementals, uh, what to take, why to take it, what faction to run it against. The health bars is something that you want to go and pay an awful lot of attention to as well when to run particular elements and looking at the enemy's health to help you understand and identify which elements to run the combinations of the elements and also the order of layout of when you put the elements into a weapon now for now we're just going to be looking in towards weaponry primary secondaries and melees but elementals are something that can be found across all kinds of things they can be uh, innately integrated uh, within warframes basic abilities uh, they could be within companions or companion weaponry uh, normally elementals are just going to be spread across the boards however uh, for now we're going to be looking into primary weapons as our example and i'm going to be choosing a weapon here called the karak uh, this is a weapon that you can pick up nice and early inside the game uh, so that you can now go and see the modification section uh, and all of you guys can identify the weapon nice and easy so uh, yes there's all of these stats on the left hand side here we're not really going to pay attention to any of these stats and that includes status chance this video is not looking at the procs of each elemental every elemental has its own individual proc and that is where status chance comes in this is going to be in another video that i will do following up on this video for now we're going to be looking in towards the damage of the uh, weapons the damage of the elementals what to take when to take it where it's most effective why so forth so let's go ahead and begin by explaining that there are 15 elemental technically there's 15 elementals in the game uh, the first three are going to be your physicals impact puncture and slash the next four are going to be your four flat elementals which are things like heat toxin electric and finally colds and if I take heat here as an example, and I just put this in there, so you can see that heat will now go into the weapon, you can also combine elements. So if I go and take heat and electric, I now go ahead and get radiation, rather than just getting heat and electric, it combines to a new element. So there are six combinations of elements, and on the screen now, I should hopefully have a chart up as I go ahead and explain this. There is corrosive and blast, there is radiation and viral, and there is magnetic and gas. And the reason why I pair them like that is because if you do happen to go and throw mods into your builds, so if I type in corrosive as an example here, and I throw that in there, you'll see I get corrosive. Now, can I get corrosive and viral? Now, the answer is no, not through just my modding. Uh, that's not how it kind of works, unfortunately. If there was innate, if the weapon came with viral, so it said viral in here and then I added corrosive in yes I could go ahead and get it it's a little weird uh, but that's how it kind of works so if I've I've only got two more elements remaining right now um, and the last two are going to be heat and cold which means I'm always going to go ahead and get blast so blast and corrosive can uh, be uh, a pair together and then just by one switch you'll see that I can change them to gas and magnetic and by another switch I can change them whoops uh, that one there I think yeah uh, to radiation and viral. I'll explain what I just did there so you guys can understand them rather than just guess uh, which elements you will get. So those are 13 elements. So what is the 14th element? The 14th element is void. Now void isn't something that I want to go into too much inside this video but it is something that you guys will go ahead and use a fair bit later in the game. I'm sorry that I'm not going to overly break into it. Uh, there will be some spoilers attached towards it. Even just mentioning Void will make some people's heart rate go up. So uh, I won't be jumping into Void too much for you guys. Uh, then there's things like True Damage as well, uh, which is things like Finisher Damage or Slash Procs, so forth. Uh, but again, that's uh, that's a different kind of category in its own. But uh, don't worry about True Damage. Don't worry about Void. Let's go to focus on the main 13 out of the 15 that there is available within Warframe today. So let's start off with the free physicals impact puncture and slash so if i wanted to take impact and i wanted to mod for impact is this a good idea the answer to that is no so i have to explain this one real quickly before we continue whenever it comes to modding you see these three here now not all weapons are going to have this okay not all weapons are going to have impact puncture and slash on them some weapons are going to come with just corrosive some weapons are going to come with just puncture and heat some weapons are going to come with just slash and cold for example um so the reason why we don't go ahead and overly mod for uh, impact here the reason why we don't mod for physicals is because to do with the raw damage of the weapon <laughs> 
you don't get that much returns in it. Now, unless, unless like 75% of the total raw damage is built into like one category here. So let's say that Slash was, I don't know, 900 Slash right now, and then all of this stuff was pretty low. Uh, let's just say that this was 25, and let's just say that this was 30 then yes, modern in towards the slash there actually kind of somewhat helps it and you would actually get better returns. But for the most part, you don't really get better returns. With these mods, impact, slash and puncture mods, general rule of thumb to help you guys understand modern, don't mod for them. Uh, please look at the date of this video right now. I'm going to try and predict this. Um, as of right now, don't mod for them. Rule of thumb, okay? Uh, that, does, that doesn't mean that, you know, if you don't have other, as you can see all of the mods on my screen here, when you're new to the game, you won't have this luxury. I understand that. It takes a long time to go and get all of these mods and build them all up and get them all uh, completely maxed out. So if there's nothing else that you've got and you just want to throw a mod in there, sure, but again, you're not going to overly increase your damage. Just keep it that way so you guys can understand it. So for the most part, rule of thumb, don't really overly mod out for these. You don't really need to. There's only a few niche scenarios where modding for physical elements actually work in your favor. So impact, let's let's begin. Impact, uh, why do we go ahead and take impact? What is impact actually good against? Again, we're just focusing on damage here. We're not focusing on proc. That will be in the next video. So the damage of impact is mostly used against corpus shields and also proto shields. Now, again, hopefully up on the screen here, we'll display this. A corpus enemy tends to have shields before their health. You can distinguish this and identify it much quicker because they have a blue bar or a purple bar in front of a red bar. So that basically means that they've got shields there. Now, shields always regenerate, so keep that in mind. So if I do x amount of damage remove the shields the shields are completely down and i don't attack it for about five seconds it will slowly start regenerating shields so as you could imagine it's not overly going to be that great the idea is i'd rather go and take on the health or hit the health as much as i can but impact is mostly used against shields or in the grenier faction uh, they have machinery things like the rolling turrets and so forth uh, again impact isn't something that you overly go and mod for uh, as of again, as of uh, again, if you look at the date of this video, um, impact is actually one of the worst elements to mod for. So we don't really tend to go and lean towards this one. Like I said, the physicals are not overly that great. Slash though is a fair bit better, which I'll explain in the next video why. Uh, so impact, general rule of thumb, mostly used against corpus and corpus uh, factions for their shields. Up next is Puncture. Now, Puncture is mostly used to puncture the yellow health bar, which is armor representative of the Grenier. So it's mostly against the Grenier faction. Now, yellow health bar basically means that they have armor, like in the blue bar means that they have shields. So yellow for armor. Now, there are mostly two types of armor within the Grenier faction as of right now. There is ferrite armor, which is mostly found on light units, and there is alloy armor, which is mostly found on heavier units. Uh, easier way to distinguish this is looking at the, the, the bodies of them. The more that you play, the more that you'll start to understand like, oh, that's a big boy and oh, that's not really much of a big boy. So the bigger boys tend to have uh, alloy armor. The smaller boys tend to go and have the ferrite armor. So, uh, Puncture can also be used against Robotic uh, on Corpus. So, Corpus as a faction is normally split off into two categories. There is Humanoids and there are Robotics. They like their technology. Uh, the Robotic side of them, once you remove their shields, Puncture would do bonus damage against the Electric... Uh, electric... Against the Electronics of the Robotics. Does that make sense? Hopefully that is. Uh, and then finally, um, this uh, puncture can also be used against infested Sinu, from, uh, mostly from enemies within Heart of Deimos, or Deimos, which is a planet. When you go around a navigation, uh, a lot of enemies over there, a lot of infested enemies over there have infested Sinu uh, health, if you will. So, um, puncture does a great job of uh, puncturing through that and attacking the armor, mostly. So, uh, finally we have Slash. Uh, slash as damage mostly attacks health. That's the whole idea of Slash. You want to get, you want it to go ahead and attack the health directly and uh, get the bonus damage there. Now, Infested is where this excels mostly. Infested doesn't have armor, and Infested uh, don't also have shields. They don't have blue bars. They don't. They can have yellow bars, but they don't tend to have yellow bars. Uh, they mostly just have red bars. So we use Slash to go ahead and attack their health more so directly. So you'll get bonus damage against the Infested with Slash. Uh, yes, this can. Can also be used against um, Grenier for bonus damage and yes this can also be used against Corpus for bonus damage but keep in mind you have to remove the shields and the armor before you actually even get any bonus damage so much against them. 
uh, or your bonus damage will be lowered. So, general rule of thumb, don't mod for the physicals. Impact is mostly used against Corpus and their shields. Puncture is mostly used against Grenier and their armor. Slash is most, mostly used against Infested and their health. You're all good? You're all good. Awesome. So that's basically where you go ahead and get the bonuses from those. Now, most of these bonuses are only going to be around 25% to 50%. I will go and place a chart on the screen, hopefully now, that will kind of showcase and explain where you get bonus damages and what to go ahead and run them again. I will also be throwing a whole bunch of Wikipedia links in towards the description of the video. So if you do want to understand this at your own time and read at your own pace, please go and head towards those links because I use them an awful lot and they're very easy to refer back to. So up next we got the four flats so let's go ahead and keep running through this so we've got heat heat where do we go and use heat for the bonus damage again not for the proc for the bonus damage uh, we mostly use this against infested and the health that is as simple as what it is you're not going to overly get any more bonuses against the uh, grenier or the corpus you mostly use against this uh, use this against the infested so heat for infested then next we've got toxin now, Toxin is uh, mostly used for the Corpus health. Again, now this is humanoids. This isn't robotics. The wonderful thing about Toxin, though, is that there is a double whammy, and I haven't, and I don't want to overly explain to uh, status procs to you right now, but Toxin um, not only can attack health and give you bonus damage, but the proc of Toxin can actually bypass shields. So when it procs, it ignores all shields and it attacks health directly, um, which is fantastic. But for the bonus damage, that is against humanoid, uh, humanoid from Corpus health. Up next we have Electric. Uh, this is mostly for the Corpus and the Robotic. So again, all of the Robotics within the Corpus. Also the Grenier Machinery, just Machinery as a whole. Uh, corpus and Grenier. Uh, any kind of uh, turrets or mowers or whatever. Anything that they're using against you. This is where Electric tends to excel. And finally we have Cold here. And Cold is mostly used against the shields of the Corpus. Again, like I said, we don't really tend to mod, for sh mod against shields. Uh, because shields regenerate. So... There's just no point. There's ways to bypass that. There's better things to go ahead and do better bonus damage than that. So uh, the Corpus as well. You'll happen to notice that Toxin, Electric and Cold all work very well against Corpus. You can also use Cold as well against the Alloy Armor. That is the bigger units of the uh, Grenier as well. This will also do bonus damage there. Okay, so uh, these flats are good to go to run with. Uh, these flats are great. Uh, in terms of bonus damage, they won't give you the most. Again, they're around 25 to 50% bonus damage. Uh, it's the combined elements that can give you around 75 to 50%, which is what we want to start focusing on right now. Uh, but most of these elements from here onwards will be way better for their procs not for their bonus damage but more so for the procs anyways let's go ahead and get into it so up next we have got corrosive so corrosive is toxin and electric so now we've got corrosive what is corrosive used for it's mostly used against the ferrite armor it does 75 percent bonus damage to any light or lighter related units within the grenier faction so this is when you're mostly running corrosive nowadays armor isn't as detrimental and as important to focus against uh, the enemies received a nerf to their armor but their scaling armor is stronger but the nerf to the armor has made them a fair bit weaker so we don't really tend to go and lean towards that but again in the future just so that you understand that could easily change the armor thing uh, this is this is what you mostly use against armor is corrosive this can also be used though against the infested and their fossilized health these are things like ancients and so forth um i believe it's like brood mother boiler ancient healer ancient disruptor so forth uh, those kind of units that you come against just the bigger infested this is where corrosive also does a great job of giving you bonus damage against them so ferrite armor from Grenier and fossilized health from Infested. Okay, up next we have got Blast, which is a combination of cold and heat. So as we could go and see there. Now Blast is used against Grenier machinery. Um, it's also used against Infested fossilized health. Here's the thing with Blast, we don't really tend to overly go ahead and mod for it. It's not overly that great, because when it starts coming towards a status proc, it's not that fantastic there. Um, but Blast itself, uh, yes, Grenier Machinery, so turrets and droids and so forth, and uh, Ancient Health and so forth. So. 
Right, anyways, up next we've got radiation. Just trying to whiz through these. So radiation is mostly used against the Grenier and the heavier units of Grenier. Now radiation is actually a wonderful um, element in terms of bonus damage. It'll be one of the ones that you'll go to just because of the bonus damage. Not so much the proc, but the bonus damage is fantastic. So against Grenier, alloy armor, the bigger units, things like Nox, things like Bombard, so forth. These big units can take a, a while to wear down. This is where radiation does a great job of giving you bonus damage against those particular units. Now this also works out very well against infested Sinu, so again uh, enemies from like Heart of Deimos or particular boss related enemies so forth. And then this also works really well against Corpus, uh, giving you a 25% bonus against the machinery. So actually if anything, radiation is a good element in terms of bonus damage because it works across all different, uh, all different factions. Uh, not as the general aspect against infested, but mostly the uh, rarity or higher levels of infested that's where it's a bit better but outside of that it is a great element to go ahead and run uh, for its bonus damage up next we've got viral and viral is mostly used uh, against the cloned health of grenier now here's the thing with this if grenier have the armor you're not really getting that bonus there because you've got to be working against the armor viral's not really that great in terms of bonus damage anymore um a while back we used to be able to strip enemy armor completely and if we do ever get a time to uh, strip enemy armor completely from modding again, um, but I think that meta is way behind us now, uh, then Viral would be fantastic. Uh, it's it's mostly used against cloned flesh because the Grenier have like a diseased flesh, so Viral is a good way to kind of corrode that down in its own sense. So, but yeah, unfortunately, unless you can, unless you've got like a Warframe ability that can uh, fully remove enemy armor, whether it be uh, temporary or permanent, so long as you completely remove the enemy armor, then actually work with Viral because it tends to pair very well uh, when they have no armor. Uh, then this also works well against Corpus Flesh, uh, so this is Humanoids. Uh, so once their shields are down, Viral is also a really good way to attack the Corpus Health as well. So mostly Humanoids is where Viral is really good, as like its own kind of disease if you will. Up next we've got Magnetic, um, which I can't spell. Uh, up next we've got Magnetic, which is a combination of Electric and Colds. Uh, magnetic is heavily used against Shields and Proto Shields. Again, there is an issue here uh, because we don't really tend to, like I've spoken about how Toxic can bypass shields, so you're better off just kind of leaning towards Toxic or uh, some element. Shields regenerate is, my, is the point that I'm trying to say here. So unfortunately, modding against those shields tends to be you're working harder than smarter if you can bypass your shields in any way why wouldn't you just bypass them rather than working with them so magnetic is mostly for the shields of enemies yes you can still run this yes it's still fine to run it um there will be some scenarios though where it's just better to not run it and bypass but magnetic is for uh Proto shields and shields in general, mostly against the corpus. And then finally, and last uh, but not least, is gas. Gas is a combination of heat and toxin, and gas is mostly used against infested flesh. Now, this is actually mostly the basic units of infested. Here's the issue with this, is that they're just basic units. The odds are, because they have no armor, because they have no shields, they're going to die to your just raw damage anyways. So, even if you did mod for the gas, yes, you are getting bonus damage on every hit you're doing against them but they're gonna die anyways because they're not really that strong in the first place it kind of makes it a bit awkward basically so modern for gas into infested kind of half makes sense half doesn't make sense so that's basically the bonus damage um i wanted this video to be a bit shorter and this is why i have to do this into two videos because there's no way to actually make this shorter but hopefully you guys understand elements a little bit better here so the last thing that we need to go and do is and uh, i did speak about this earlier was the combination of elements so there are four flat elements in the game. There is heat, there is toxin, and when you watch this, you see I get gas, there is cold. Now, pause, pause. We do know that there's one more, right? We got heat, we got toxin, we got cold, and we know that there's electric. So you'll see here that I have cold and I have gas. So what actually, what actually happens when I move these around? Rule of thumb, from top left to top right, from bottom, from top right to bottom left, from bottom left to bottom right is the order that you want them in. The first two that meet will give you the combination that you want. So in this case here, let's say, uh, so I've got heat, I've got toxin, I've got cold. I want magnetic. 
So if you can remember, magnetic is a combination. Oh, I can't get magnetic here. Um, <laughs> I want blast is what I want. Uh, so blast, uh, blast is a combination of heat and cold. So where do I put the cold mod? Uh, if I whack it anywhere here, uh, nothing's going to really happen because again, this meets this first, then meets that. If I now do this, now I've got my blast because this means this first. Now it doesn't matter where I put this, doesn't matter at all because these are the two that meet first. So so long as you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you'll start to understand how to get your combinations and where to go ahead and place them because no matter what I do from here onwards, I will always now have blast and toxin because I'm just shifting them all around. So long as this doesn't go in between them, it will change the elements. Now I've got Viron Heat because it's cold that meets Toxin. Hopefully you guys understand that now. Hopefully this is a good way for you guys to get into the game. I'm just going to apologize that I made the video a bit long here um, and I did try to do all of this in one take. But the idea is I want you guys to understand what to take, why to take it, how to take it, when to take it, what to look for, what are the signs, so forth, so forth. So if this video did help you, please, even if you knew all of this and you think that I've done a good job of breaking it down, can you please like the video? Um, those ratings do generally help me they help me get searched inside warframe uh, directory um and the categories of warframe because god forbid the youtube algorithm can be hard to work against uh so if you guys did enjoy as well consider sharing the video with a friend if you know someone who's new to warframe and you think i did a good job of breaking it down there um hopefully in the in the next video i'll be able to go and break it down a bit quicker but status as an status as a warframe academy guide to like break down isn't something that i can do uh, half assed i have to break everything down so you guys can fully understand it i want you guys to come into these videos understanding uh, and leaving feeling happy uh, finally on top of that if you guys are new to the stri uh, stream so i'm too used to streaming if you guys are new to youtube and you guys are having a good time you liked what you saw here and you guys are not subscribed consider hitting the subscribe button please come join us more often uh, you can always find me live over on my twitch channel as well uh, twitch.tv forward slash no sympathy but until next video guys uh, the follow-up video will be for status chance this is where i'm gonna explain the the prox of every element so they do two things it doesn't just do the damage it also has uh, another thing that you can do with it so i'll be explaining that in the next video i hope you guys enjoyed this one look out for the next video um i should go ahead and add it inside the description below when it is out but otherwise thank you guys so much for tuning in today i really appreciate you guys coming to hang out uh, good luck with your builds if you've got any questions leave it in the comment section below and i'll see you guys in the next video